Welcome guys to another NG Minute. There is a lot of things that actually happened on TNA since Bound for Glory is starting to come upon us. And also, since Battleground is right around the corner, let's get started here with TNA. I am going to say this. There were a lot of interesting things that actually happened on TNA, but I'm going to talk about maybe a few of them. The one thing I love is Ego. I'm a huge fan of Ego. I love their group. I, I absolutely lo love them. And the match, the gauntlet match that Magnus had against Ego... I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I love Christopher Daniels. Even though Christopher Daniels is somewhat comic relief, you can still take him seriously in the ring as well as Kazarian. But I love Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode still saves Bobby Roode. But he's still, I mean, he fits in ego so well. You would think that Bobby Roode would think he's better than Kaz and Daniels. But that whole team fits really well. And I love Magnus, but I never really expected Magnus to go further. But honestly, the bigger thing is this. Hulk Hogan quits. He is done. He is finished. Finito with TNA. All because Dixie Carter decided to go bad and nobody can stand being around her anymore. Honestly, was it going to be for TNA? Not so well. <laughs> I don't think it's going to go well at all for TNA because everybody pretty much watches TNA for Hulkamania. That's it. Period. Finito. TNA is practically... Not going to be so well unless they convince him to come back. But let's face it, he's had his run. He's had his run. He really does need to retire. And it'll be best for him to actually sit this one out. TNA need to learn how to rescue TNA without bringing Legends back. The WWE is starting to learn. They need to start learning. Seriously. Those are pretty much the only two things that I was interested in. Oh, wait. No, one more thing. Bow for Glory really did get, uh, get something kind of going for me, kind of made me more interested in watching. The fact that they actually did have a tag team match, I think it was with um, Jeff Hardy and Manic versus Saban and, and um, Kenny King. I loved that tag team match. I enjoyed it a lot. I really, really, really did. But here's the thing that makes me so much more excited. There's going to be an Ultimate X match. And this is going to be Jeff Hardy's first Ultimate X match. I am absolutely excited about watching this. It is going to be Chris Saban, Kenny King, Manic, and Jeff Hardy in an Ultimate X match at Bound for Glory. I am looking forward to this. I really, really am. I am very excited. And oh my goodness, I cannot wait for Bound for Glory to happen. I would talk about... The only two members of the Aces and Eights, <laughs> Brooke and Bully Ray, but I really can care less. And honestly, Velvet Sky, yeah, um, okay. <laughs> She's not bad or anything, but the thing is, they had, um, uh, they had Lady Teppa pretty much come out and beat the ever-loving crap out of her. And I didn't mind it because I happened to be a fan of Lady Teppa. Because I really do want to have someone that can, that can replace Awesome Kong. Because now that Mickey James is gone, they really do need to have some sort of an edge in the knockout division. Seriously, they really do. But I'm absolutely looking forward for Bound for Glory, as well as next week's um, as well as um, next week's Impact. I absolutely am looking forward uh, to it. But let's move on to SmackDown, shall we? There was a lot that actually went on in SmackDown, but I will say this. It was a heck of a lot better than Raw. Because Raw did absolutely nothing, nothing at all for the upcoming pay-per-view. And that was the go-home show. Pathetic. But I will say that this actually felt like a go-home show. They actually did do whatever they could with any feuds they didn't beef up. They tried to beef it up to the best of their ability. And they did a great job in promoting the actual pay-per-view by having all the feuds on the show. Which is what they're supposed to do. And it makes me really happy. Even though they had filler matches that didn't make any sense. They had Fandango versus RVD. Even though I didn't really care much about Fandango or RVD's match. Even though it was a filler, it still did something to promote Battleground. And Battleground needs as much hype as they could possibly get. But the overall thing is the beginner. Like, it's nice. I keep saying it's nice. But let's face it. It was... Meh, to actually see the big show coming out and apologizing. I'm tired of my giant crying and acting like a little baby. But here's the here's the thing that kind of confuses me. The entire corporate storyline is now surrounding the big show and kind of pushed Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton aside. 
So if they're focusing so much on the Big Show and his personal problems, why don't they have him on the pay-per-view to fight for his personal problems like they did with Shawn Michaels? Because let's face it, they're co- they're they're cut, copying, pasting, repeat, wash, rinse, whatever. They're doing the exact same thing that JBL did to Shawn Michaels all those years ago. They should do the exact same thing and kill this feud with Big Show and the corporation. Just completely end it, please. Because I am so tired of seeing my giant cry. I would rather see the Big Show go back as a heel because he was awesome as a heel. We have all the matches pretty much tied in together on SmackDown. They did a very good job in doing that. And actually, the end of the, the, the main event was something I was more interested in. Because they act, even though it didn't do anything for Big Show, especially he has no match going to Battleground, as far as I know. There's really nothing going on for him for Battleground. But I will say this, it did make the Big Show look good because he practically gave it his all. Even though in the end he got kind of taken down a little bit, it really did help Daniel Bryan because it pushed Daniel Bryan out there and actually did kind of promote Randy Orton's feud with Daniel Bryan at the at the ending of the show, which I really do think was a great ending. It was a good way to end it because it kind of leaves a teaser, and that's what they're supposed to do. But the thing that kind of um, that I'm somewhat interested in is Brie Bella's match with AJ Lee. I kind of thought it was thrown in there in the last minute, and it is kind of thrown in there in the last minute. But the thing is that, that AJ Lee is probably the best psychotic female heel that I have seen since Mickey James. I absolutely starting to love AJ Lee because she is the best villainess I have ever seen in WWE TV besides Mickey James. And she's definitely doing and she's she's pretty much close to filling her shoes, in my humble opinion. Not fully, she still has a way to go. But either or, she is absolutely great. I still feel bad for Tamina because she is practically a, well, a bodyguard now. But regardless of that, I'm really looking forward to the match they're going to have in Battleground. A lot of people believe that Brie Bella is going to go heel. She's going to go against Daniel Bryan, causing him to lose. But it wouldn't make any sense to do that because Total Divas is going to be coming out in November. Unless they actually already tied this in and made the decision that she was going to go bad. It would make sense for her to go heel, but they have to promote Total Divas, and it will go against the storyline for Total Divas, so it doesn't make any sense for her to be bad now. I mean, not in my humble opinion, but honestly, guys, I will say this. The, I've said it about a thousand times, but the match with Alberto Del Rio versus Dolph Ziggler, not only did it, it went unusually long, but it was still really quite a treat to watch. And obviously, because Dolph Ziggler happens to be one of the the best guys to ever wrestle with because he is really good in kind of being in sync with his opponent. And not only that, um, uh, Alberto Del Rio can really good, he can give great matches. Like, seriously, he really can. I never expected it to go that long, but either or, it was a great match to watch and I'm not going to totally complain. But is it just me or did the money in the briefcase become completely obsolete since Triple H actually handed it to Randy Orton? So, while they're trying to beef up the importance of the Money in the Bank briefcase after Triple H practically killed it, and they're trying to actually make everybody interested to find out what Damian Sandow is going to do on Battleground, whether or not he's going to cash it in. I could honestly care less because, let's, let's face it, Triple H pretty much killed that whole idea. But honestly, I don't know. I don't know whether or not Damian Sandow is going to be champion. I would not be surprised if he's going to be the one that, that actually lose. The Money in the Bank briefcase, I would not be surprised if they're going to screw him. But honestly, I can care less about that briefcase. It's practically dead in my opinion. But my overall thoughts of the show is this. SmackDown did a great job promoting ba- Battleground a lot better than Raw. They pretty much su- summed up all the feuds together and kind of promoted a lot more. And added actually one more match. Um, They actually added Bray Wyatt versus Kofi Kingston, which is something I'm looking forward to. So they actually did something with Bray Wyatt, which is even better. So they did they did a great job with the pay-per-view, trying to promote it. They, even though they had filler matches, they were still very interesting to watch. And it kind of hypes you up a little bit for Battleground. So overall, I absolutely love SmackDown. It did a very good job in what it's supposed to do. But my thoughts is this. What are your thoughts on SmackDown? How do you think it should have went? Leave a comment in the comment section below or a video response. And also, tell me the same about TNA. This is Nature Girl 30 signing off. Peace out. Later.